Hey everybody, Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a really interesting video for you. This is a, one of the toughest projects you'll ever have to do when you're remodeling a house. So what we're going to show you today is we have a cast iron stack back here and this is the drain pipe for the kitchen sink. So we're going to show you how to unscrew this old drain pipe and remove it from the cast iron. And then my goal here today is to replace it with this modern PVC pipe with a See, I have a threaded mill connector on here. We'll hopefully get to thread this in like this and we'll have the stub out come out further. Because the whole problem here is this older stub out just isn't coming out far enough. By the time we put the drywall in the new cabinet, this mission connector is going to be back behind the wall. We don't want that. What you want here is the appropriate sized stub out. So by putting in a new PVC pipe and it'll get us back into the 21st century here, we can have the stub out come out to here where we need it and then just cut it to any length we want. And then the end of the pipe will have this here. This is a hub adapter. So this hub adapter allows the P-trap to plug right into it and then you're set. There's nothing else you have to worry about. See, here's a closer up look of this here. So the stub out just isn't coming out far enough. But look how back in the old days, see they screwed it in and it looks like they probably used some pipe dope. So what we're going to do here is try to use, first of all, the uh, PB blaster. This is a penetrating for rust, so we'll see if it can get through there. If they used that pipe dope, chances are it's all cemented in and solidified, and it probably won't penetrate very far. So we'll see if we have to use this and maybe a combination of heat going around the edge of that collar there, and then heat it from underneath as well. Hopefully that'll maybe expand the metals and separate the threads so that they'll, they'll loosen up. For those of you who are not familiar with this type of operation and what a penetrating lubricant, these are, are lubricants that are designed to get in there between the threads and they're designed to break apart rusted parts that are frozen together. And so usually you just spray it in there and you give it a few minutes and you can spray it again and give it some taps. Um, depending on how stuck these items are, you know, you could be going at it for a half hour of just lubricating and, and lightly tapping to get them to break free. Many people also like to use another lubricant called Pipe Break, which is a penetrating oil also that comes in an aerosol spray can. It's usually pretty much only available on Amazon. They don't have it at Home Depot or Lowe's. So I'll put links to both of these in the video description down below for you. Well, make sure you're wearing eye protection here because you don't want any of this spraying back in you. And you might even want to wear a mask too you don't want to breathe in any fumes. So let's go ahead and start right here. Remember, this doesn't evaporate or anything. What it does is it just keeps on penetrating. It leaves a nice film of lubrication there. So here's a close-up view. Now we know how extremely difficult these can be because people spend hours trying to pound these things out. So we're just going to spend about five minutes or so every minute or so, giving another application of this lubricant in here, this penetrating lubricant, to work its way in there and see if it can help us loosen things up for us. So this is where patience is key, folks. This is not like a little old rusty bolt that you give a quick squirt on and it comes right off. This is where you really need a lot of patience. Here we are five minutes later again. We're going to add some more. I'll just keep doing this. Some of it will soak in, some of it will run down and out the bottom. So if you want to put a rag or something on the bottom to catch whatever drips off there, that's fine. All right, so we have a lot of issues facing us here because we're in a narrow space. The point where we would attach our wrench here is set back behind the wall. And then there's all sorts of pipes back in there. So we're going to try first with just our regular rigid pipe wrench. It has to go in in this orientation here. And as you can see, the reason is because these teeth here on the stationary part are angled upward so they will dig into the nut as we loosen it and then these teeth on the claw side the movable side see see how they're angled downward like this they will dig into the nut this way and actually force it counterclockwise okay now I want to go around and just do some gentle banging nothing big nothing fancy you're just trying to you're not trying to bust the metal you just want to you know jar it loosen it a little bit once we get the wrench on there, we'll give it some more love taps. And then we'll give it a little bit more spray here. We'll just keep on going. Keep on getting that lubricant in there, that penetrating lubricant to remove that stuck 
threaded pipe out of that nice black cast iron stack so they don't use these stacks anymore but we find these a lot in these old houses this house was built in 1946 so back in the 40s that's how they did plumbing it was all put together with lead and i'm even surprised that this part was threaded because even those a lot of times back in the day were were just put in by melting the lead okay Okay, so you can see with your wrench on there, what I try to do is see, we have very limited range here. Once it's on there tight and not moving, you wanna make sure you're holding it snug and, and just start giving it a whole bunch of little light ones like this. You're not slamming it, you're not going hard because you don't wanna shatter anything. So you just, you know, just over a course of four or five minutes, maybe just keep doing it and see. And then you can try pulling it up by hand or slipping a pipe over it. So I sort of have my wrench on there now. What I'm going to do, I just have this length of PVC pipe, Schedule 40, real thick. You can, you're better off really with a galvanized pipe. But let's see if this will do it. I'm going to... So here's my pipe. I'm going to slide it right over the handle and not go all the way up, just enough to... Give myself some good leverage. So we've already banged the wrench for a couple of minutes. Just gave it a bunch of upward love taps with the hammer. Now let's see if we can get this to go. There it goes, see it? It turned. Good, look at that. So we got some good penetration there with that lubrication, didn't we? And you just, we may be able to get it with the channel locks from here after this initial loosening Let's see that so this is what we had here okay oh. uh, so you just use a lot of grunting a lot of old school fighting with the tools see just go like this We've got it far enough that we can get the rest out ourselves. And what have we there, folks? See all the penetrating oil? It went in just far enough. They didn't really have this thing screwed in all that far. Whew. It stinks, too. Don't forget, you want to plug that up while you gather your thoughts, take a rest, grab a beer, celebrate your victory. But then you want to come back and clean that out. Look at all this gook in there now, too, huh? Look, yummy. Anybody hungry? Now I'm just going to use one of my nail sets just to kind of gently try to remove some of this caked on stuff. I don't want to destroy or harm any of the threads, so I'm just giving it very light love taps. Yeah, I had to put my mask on. I've got my N95 mask on right now because that smell's coming up from the sewer here. Sometimes we see little bugs come crawling out too. All right, so we're going to see how much luck we have here with the old wire brush. Try to clean out some of these threads. Say hello to my little friend. Now I'm gonna put him on low speed. Man, when you talk about caked in there, that stuff is like cement. Now, we can see a lot of that stuff is still caked on and some of it came off with the wire brush. I want to spray it with the PB blaster again. And it, it seemed that it did a really good job on the pipe that we removed on the threads to soften this. So that when I came by with my wire brush on the other pipe, I was able to get a lot of this to go away. So we're just going to leave some on here and let it soak and get wet and loosen. Okay, see, so look at this. I was able to use just that little handheld wire brush to clean off most of the gook off of these threads off of the pipe that I pulled out of there because the PB Blaster did a good job of softening all of that, whatever that cement was. It was, yeah, it was probably just all of the pipe dope. But so why won't it come out of those other threads? So I think that might be lead or solder that somehow ran down in there and got caught in those threads and so there's nothing you can do. Even if you melted it, where's it gonna go? Now I'm going to do about three or four wraps around the threads. And remember, you always go, as you're looking into the thread, you go clockwise around so that when you tighten it in there, 
it doesn't unravel itself. You want it to reinforce the tightening down of this. So I'm going real slow here to show you. As I go around, I, I like to mash it into the threads there. Make sure it's in there nice and stable. Here. Okay. So you go all the way around, you make sure it's nicely embedded in there and that it's not loose or moving or anything. You want to check all the way around. Now, some people prefer to use, like here, there's your pipe dope here, your pipe thread sealant. So this is the Rector brand. That's probably the most common one that most people use. Now this can be used on plastic and metal. It says it right there. However, don't be fooled by that because you can't use it on this type of plastic, which is CPVC. And you can't use this on the ABS black pipes that are common in California. California doesn't use this white PVC. They typically use ABS. And I think in Canada too, also. All right, so, but you can use it on here if you need to. Some people prefer to either do the tape, some people prefer to do the pipe dope, and some people prefer to put tape first and then pipe dope if they're having problems. So I would say start with the tape, and if you find you're having leaks, then you can take it out, redo the tape, and then apply the pipe dope right across the tape, you know, right around the threads there, and try it again. So now what I'm going to do here in order to cut down on the friction and lubricate things here and give us a chance to screw in our pipe as good as it can go. I'm going to squirt in some silicone grease rather liberally here and smooth it around the threads. This is going to need a little more because there's just a lot of stuff in here that wouldn't come off. But I want to make sure that we're at least well lubed in that our threads will go. And I'm hoping to go further than the original pipe went in. Now I've got the pipe wrench on there. Got my little bleach wipe here. I'm gonna make sure this thing is like nice and perfectly clean inside and out. Now I'll get a fresh wipe and I'll clean off the end of the pipe here as well. I always like to make sure they're clean. They may look white and clean, but they're not, man. When you get these things home in the store and you're handling them, you're gonna find black all over your hands. There's so much dirt on these that you don't even see. Now they're both clean and ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to cement the pipe in here, right? So what we wanna do is we first have to use primer. And I see so many people get this wrong. They don't use the primer. Do not ever skip the primer. You have to use the primer. It's required by building code in most areas anyway. Uh, the inspector comes, if they don't see that purple stripe or whatever color primer you're supposed to be using, they'll fail you. So you put the primer on and then this is the cement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the pipe with the primer and then go inside there and then come around the pipe again with the primer. While it's still wet, and you have to do this while it's wet, I'm going to take the cement. I'm going to go around the pipe, around the inside here, and then back around the pipe again. I'm going to insert it and then turn it 90 degrees and hold it for 30 seconds. And I can't, I can't begin to tell you how many professional plumbers, guys, that I see get this wrong, where I've been there and they turn, they, they put it in like this. Some don't even turn it. Some push it in and don't even hold it. I've seen people turn it, but not hold it. And one guy, we had to call him back the next day because his, what happens is, is these forces from the cement that force it out like that. Okay, so you have to make sure you have everything that you need right here within inches because it goes very fast what, what you have to do and there's no time to mess around. You oftentimes only have, once you pour that cement on, you only have seconds. So we're going around the pipe. We're going around the inside here. 
And I'm going around the pipe again. Okay, while that is still wet, taking my blue stuff, I'm going around the pipe. I'm going inside and I'm going around the pipe again one more time. I'm going to stick the pipe in there. Oops, come on baby, out of the way. Get all the way in there and make that quarter turn. And I'm gonna hold it for 30 seconds in place. My left hand is holding it from turning. My right hand is holding it from pushing out. So I'm forcing it in right now. Hold on its own. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry probably about a half hour or so before I do my water test. I'll go off and do other stuff here. Okay, so we just made our cut here. And because I didn't need the pipe to come all the way out, I gave it just enough excess here for us to do our rough in. And then when we put our base cabinet and the sink in and everything, and we know exactly where the P-trap is going to be, we'll cut it back down. So this is the P-trap adapter here. And this has just a little piece of cardboard on here which blocks the sewer gases. And we're not cementing this in place yet because we don't cement it into place until we have everything pre-cut and ready to go and we know exactly where it needs to be cut at and then we'll cement this on the end. Now, the one thing that's great about using these PVC cutoff tools is that, see the edge is perfectly sharp here and clean, there's no deburring. And we did a great video where I compared this Milwaukee PVC shear to the Ryobi. So I'll put a link to that down in the video description for you as well. That's a cool video, you gotta check that out. And we show it cutting all these different types and sizes of pipes. Okay, let's do a little more. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you on the next one.